So our president's announcement of primary elections at this juncture, which was the most important statement to come out of the resolutions of yesterday, he announced it himself. It is a milestone on the march to the harmonized elections. Everyone knows the delimitation committee made its report. The president gazetted it. So the other steps which follow are constitutional. They are mandated by the constitution. So we will be waiting for the president to announce the date of the actual elections, harmonized elections for the country. And we are aware that once he announces those dates, then no people can continuously continue to register to vote until today. I mean, two, two days soon after the announcement. That means we've closed the register of voters. We are very happy that ZEC now is, is deployed full force uh, to make sure that it is mopping voters. Our voter registration exercises, the party has revealed that there are a lot of people who are keen to be on the voter registration of ZEC so that they can take part in the harmonized election. We welcome particularly the returning members of those who had gone to the MDC, Triple C, and they are now coming back home, the returnees. We do welcome the affiliates, men affiliates which have been formed because of the mass nature of our organization. There are many affiliates which now feel that the president is doing a good party, though we may not be the full-time members, but we want to be associated with the party. Remember, affiliates are Zimbabwean citizens and they are voters. So we do welcome them. Uh, we do welcome, of course, the enthusiasm from the white community, which is uh, lending itself in various forms to support the ruling party. It means the MTC has been marooned by the white community. They are identifying themselves as Zimbabweans, like anybody, and the part of the Zimbabwe revolution is their home. So this is a new trend which has emerged, and we think that with the voter registration drive in rural areas, particularly in former commercial areas, former farming community areas, the president has given that moratorium to say, don't impede people to get their national registration certificates. It means that citizens from formerly alien communities, from those who came as migrant laborers, their ancestors, came as migrant laborers from Zambia, from Malawi, from Mozambique, all of them now are driving in numbers to go and be registered as citizens. The president wants to take them further up the scale of exercising their democratic duties as citizens. He's making sure that they can now go and register to vote. And ZEC is full out. We are happy about its deployment to make sure that as many as possible of the Zimbabwean people go to vote so that the mandate which shall be enjoyed by the winning party, which is obvious, ZANU-PF and the winning candidate, which is obvious, President Hitting Mangala, shall enjoy the near universal support of the Zimbabwe population. This is what we are looking for. We are not looking for a landslide whitewash election akin to the one we did in 1980 at independence. That's what we are looking for. So the primaries are going to be happening a week from now. The National Political Commissar is now busy discharging that role. They will be democratic. They will follow. They will be follow the patterns of ZEC. We are using them as a dress rehearsal of the actual national elections. And people will most likely be voting from designated polling booth, booths, as announced by ZEC. So we are mimicking the national election. It is an exercise which will make us gauge what else we need to do before the day of the elections to close the gap which will deliver a landslide victory. So this was the most important announcement from yesterday. I also want to take this advantage, this, the, the advantage of this press conference, because you had your briefing from the President Direct, but the Politburo continued after your briefing. We spent more than one and a half, half hours, two hours, addressing some of the pressing social problems of the community of Zimbabwe, of the society of Zimbabwe. And the thing which took a lot of time, which touched uh, many hearts of the members of the Politburo, was the issue of violence in schools, especially bullying in the secondary schools. We were given graphic tales of some events 
in Blawa and also some events in Matnov. And there's also a tendency, similar tendency elsewhere, where schools are beginning to develop TIFFs where other students should be non grata and they also want to constrain relationships, social relationships between various groups of Zimbabwean students from, very, from different schools. We are told that they fight over girlfriends because they are coming from a certain school and not from that school. We are, you know, so all these sorts of fights, they are now being accentuated, one, by a feeling that drugs have become the mainstay of some of the student communities. Drug dealers are going into student communities and purveying their evil trade to young people. The, 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 the political highlight the abuse of social media, where gangster violence is extolled as if it is the norm. And because of the ubiquitous and, uh, you know, uh, nature of social media, it is making young people indulge in things which nobody ever thought they could be engaged in. It is uh, creating a head mentality towards bad behavior. There was also a complaint that maybe teachers and headmasters are now not being given enough authority to deal with the discipline including maybe we you know need to look at the issue of canning so that they can be proper discipline in schools. Well this issue requires the engagement of the Minister of Education, it requires the engagement of the churches, it requires the engagement of parent teacher associations, it requires also Zimbabwe's parliament to look at some of the statutes which are in compliance with the international in the ways of treating uh, pupils and children in school. You know, caning is naturally abhorred. People don't want caning to become part of the educational system. But if then it, this leads to the disrespect or the fear of the teacher, then maybe it makes uh, the, the school or the, the, or the class or the grounds where the school become unmanageable for head teachers. So a professional approach is now has been called upon to look at this problem so that we can scientifically address it uh, so that we can deal with discipline in schools so that children can concentrate on the core business of learning rather than on other nefarious activities which interfere with learning. So this matter took a lot of debate because ZANU-PF as a people's party is concerned with the day-to-day -day activities of the people of Zimbabwe, be at work, be at play, or be, be at, at, at study, at education. That's what ZANPF is concerned with. So you can see that our, our political bureau does not only preoccupy itself with lofty issues of political power, it also dwells and uh, you know, concentrates, if need be, as, and as necessary, on issues of day-to-day -day life by the Zimbabwe people. That is what the part of the Zimbabwe revolution does. We do hope that in this assignment even the opposition party can also, and the other, can get involved because schools have no political parties. But our president is going to look at the prospect of having an outreach program to schools, to school children. Maybe we do the same we've been doing with affiliates, we do the same as we've been doing with retainees, we do the same as he's doing with the business people. We do the same as he's doing with the churches. We may now need to go further. Maybe children from mid-secondary school to upper secondary school need to find a forum where they can come and interact with the head of state. So we want to uh, bring in the authority of our president, in addition to the others which I referred to earlier on, to come and apply and bear itself on this issue of violence in schools and uh, promiscuity in schools, we are here, we are told of those parties where children do all sorts of uh, unsavory things, uh, males and, 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 and females, uh, you know, under the influence of drugs and alcohol. These things need somehow to be addressed, and our party is going to leave no stone unturned 
to address this issue. We are a party of the revolution, and uh, we have the capacity to address this problem. Remember, in the 1970s, in the 1960s, but particularly in the 1970s, the people who fought this war to make us the country this free, they were all between the age of 12 and 18. They took on national responsibilities, which were beyond themselves, either as individuals and as families. And they were prepared and they died for that, for the goal of independence. So if that generation of youths could be so responsible, there is really no reason this generation would be irresponsible. We have to find a way to make them realize that a country needs sane and sober minds to be run. They have to inherit a country which is functioning where they can play their role properly. So this is a matter which preoccupied the political for quite a lot. Yes.